Hello everyone, and welcome to a very special episode. Why is it special? Because you are tuned in to Nick at Night. Uh, that's right, you found the secret channel. Just gotta turn that dial, which is a thing people do, I guess. Here, uh, here we are, sitting on the couch. Yeah. After a hours. certain event. After hours. hours. <laughs> After the hours that uh, that <laughs> that London Comic Con was open during the day oh, today. That's where you went. <laughs> Um, which uh, which we are going to talk about right now. Yeah. Um, Wait, sorry, what? That's why we're here. That's why, That's we're, why we're here. here. Yeah. I was confused by the term Nick's at night. I've been sold a false <laughs> bill of goods. It's night, we're Nick's. You get him when there was you, an you get him what was advertised. There. there was an inference, or not an implication. Maybe uh, both. But. <laughs> Just. <laughs> we had our, for our second year running going to London Comic Con, your first year. And um, I can see it has expanded from last year. They, oh, they, they, well, they now have that little horror section mm -hmm. that they didn't have before in the in the pit. Well, they had it last year, but like it was that it was like the back of the the main room last mm -hmm. year. It didn't get as much use as it as it's getting this year. I don't think. What? Where where the wrestling and the horror is? No, I'm yeah, saying. There was no wrestling last year. The horror was in the back of the main. Right. Piece. Yeah. yeah. So you're you're totally right. It did expand. Yeah. That's not the point. Anyways, go on. <laughs> Saying so, we expanded a little bit. Horror is sequestered uh, in the pit down there, and there's uh, there's a lot of people there today. Yeah, I mean, I, having never been, I really didn't know what to. I feel like I start many of these with I don't I didn't I know, know what, what to expect. expect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't. That that had, that didn't change. And um, it was it, it was good. Uh, one of the concerns that I had when we when I was coming out was, is there going to be enough stuff? And the answer is not really. But we we I've I've had a good time uh, today. We we did a few interesting things. We I watched some wrestling, which is not something that I typically do. G was, I was explaining to me the psychology I was of telling, wrestling. I was telling T how to watch wrestling live. <laughs> I'm sure that was how to be a good a good wrestling fan and in, and in, in the audience. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, like there, there were some good moves, and yeah. I. Yeah. It's not like I was really invested in these characters, but it was just fun yeah, to watch it, some people go. It was at neat. It. We were there. It was like about an hour, all told, for the Saturday afternoon card, and we were just sitting up in the bleachers. And the bleachers were about half full. And then by the end of it, the bleachers were packed. And there was a whole crowd of people next to the bleachers watching also, reacting to the match. So it was like drawing more and more people in. And I think that's when more people started showing up. Because when we went back out to the con after that, this was about 2 o'clock, it was like packed. And there was like a little bit of a line coming out the door, mm -hmm. which had not been there before. Um, but while we were doing that, you were watching a movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was watching... Um... The main, well, I guess there's a couple of movies. There's going to be short films tomorrow, and there's some horror. There's one or two horror movies tomorrow as well, but today was the main sci fi fantasy movie. It was called Legend of the Lich Lord. And it was fun. It was really fun. It was like, I guess, DD principles, but like real magic. I guess is how you would set it up because okay. everybody was like referring to each other like in RPG terms like I'm a paladin and he's a rogue and she's okay. a barbarian and this is our and like there's druids and then there's necromancers and all of that and you know they talk about mana and they talk about loot and okay. but they it was like when you have like a TV show like community yeah and they were playing D&D. D &D. Although it never actually transitioned to them in costumes. No. If that had happened, okay. that's what this would be. Alright. Yeah, it was fun. Everybody yeah. was, like, really funny. It was it was funny. Um, it was well written. I thought, like, I legit thought the main character was Ellie Kemper. <laughs> like, until the end. Wait, <laughs> Ellie Kemper as in, like, really okay. good at squinting and... Like... Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I was like watching it and she looks just like her. And I was like, 
okay, this is, like, some project that Ellie Kemper, like, they know her and they got her involved. And I was like, no. And then I, li- I had to wait till the credits because I, I thought it was her. And it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Long story short, it wasn't Ellie Kemper, but good job, not Ellie yeah. Kemper. That's... <laughs> I mean, that's one thing that we're starting to, I guess, two years in a row now, know London Comic Con for is, like, movies. Yes. Films. Because last year we saw um, Nintendo Eight. Quest. Yeah, and, and 88 mm-hmm. as well. 88. Um, we saw we saw a bunch of shorts. I remember The Looking oh, Planet in particular was really good. That's basically all I did last year was watch movies. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. So, like, that's, that's one thing that... Don't see it that many other cons. No, London Comic Con does this really, really well. Is showcase not even just local talent because when you look, like when you look at the program of who's like the movies that are playing. I don't know if it's actually in here. It's on the website. I know that much, but you're looking at like lots of international films, uh, and then you're looking at Canadian work as well. Mm-hmm. I think other mm-hmm. cons like occasionally feature stuff, but it just gets so washed out with all the other programming. Really? That's true. There's a little less programming. Yeah. Yeah. But um, speaking of other programming, went to something that on the face of it, I wasn't sure it would be any good, but it was actually quite hilarious. Um, there was this group, uh, what was it? Fan, fan Fiction, Fiction Live? They're just called Fan Fiction Live, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I remember they stated their Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and then promptly forgot it. It's like, well, it's like FF fiction live yeah, twitter you know what yeah. we'll probably look it up before yeah whatever we'll look it up uh it was this funny show with these people who have been doing this for five years they take fan fiction and they just perform it live at a at a convention that's sounds kind of goofy with but like voices and yeah, yeah yeah actually one of those guys did like a really good yeah. kind of old man or yeah the know. the like old sea captain <laughs> yeah. yeah and they said usually they don't really look at it beforehand yeah, so they have no so, context. They'll uh, today's was family friendly and had special guests Christian Potenza, who you may know as friends, friends of the show. Yeah, friends of the show. Hey, we get to say that. <laughs> so, yeah. It's true. Probably gonna interview him tomorrow. Yes. Um, yeah, special friends of the show, uh, Christian Potenza and Toby Proctor, who you might know as the voices of like Jude from Sixteen and Tuxedo Mask, respectively. Which, yeah, and uh, so they had. They had them as fun. Had them doing, they did a bunch of 16 fan fiction with Christian doing the voice of Jude. And Sailor Moon fan fiction with Toby doing the voice of Tuxedo Mask. And it was, uh, all, all, all of our face muscles were, were strained from laughing so hard. I, this, this, isn't your, this isn't your well-written fan fiction. Oh, no. They were reading the typos and like the grammatical errors and... One of, one you know, of, it's your embarrassing fan fiction that you write when you're 14 and then you want to forget. And then somebody digs it up and you're like, oh no! But like, what 13 or 14 year old was writing a 16 slash like Jaws fanfic? I mean, someone who thought they were clearly like so cool because they know about they Jaws. They know about Jaws, yeah. I mean, it was it was a little bit clever because it's like, you know, the captain's falling into the shark yeah. and it's just like, dude, <laughs> have a positive attitude. Yeah. Have, and then it's like, <laughs> followed by the narrator mm. being like, and then they bit the captain in half. What? Probably followed by <laughs> other graphic things that they did not We didn't want to read, yeah. Because children were in the audience. Um, one of my favorite parts was A, Christian, like, as he's reading it, being like, I don't want why, like he's just <laughs> just rejecting what he's what he's doing as he's doing it, and the other part being nobody knowing where they were in it because of like the punctuation and the way it was laid out is so bad. Yeah, it was, it was hilarious though. Or Toby and the sailors. Oh, to- <laughs> I think from, from what I can tell, Christian and Toby filmed the whole thing. Oh yeah, we so, should find so, out if that's so posted somewhere. We'll, we'll we'll get that link to you at some point because I'm sure they're gonna put it up somewhere. I could see the fan fiction live guys yeah. also having posted it on their yeah. various socials media. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so we also went to that, which was a lot of fun. If you're really if you're fun. in the Toronto area, seek out fan fiction live. 
They yeah. do a show once a month, I think. They said their Star next Wars show Wars. is going to be based on supernatural fan fiction, which is a gold mine, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. And will not necessarily be all ages? I'm guessing not. So, a gold mine. It should be very funny. We have my s- only disclaimer, or my only complaint would be they should maybe get, and maybe they have one and they just weren't there, but maybe a female voice oh, that's would be true. helpful. That makes sense. Yeah. I like. I wouldn't be surprised if it's just like a group of friends that started something, oh, but sure. it certainly wouldn't hurt them. No, I no. don't think so. But they were still mm. really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we did, mm. we're one of two groups Yes. to successfully travel through time and space. That's to, right. to best the master, the, uh, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, we got him. Yeah, we got him. Um, <laughs> Doctor Who Society of Canada. Yes. Put on, for the first time ever, a Doctor Who themed escape room at London Comic Con. With, with mere curtains separating it from the outside world. And it was very difficult. It was so good. And we beat it. And I say that as... Escape room connoisseurs. Oh, boy. Whoa, whoa. We've been elevated to connoisseurs. <laughs> we've elevated us to connoisseurs. We've done three of four that we're going to do this weekend. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, we've true. done three <laughs> escape rooms this weekend. It's, so far. Let's uh, <laughs> save that for the escape room cast, I guess. T- tomorrow, it's like, yeah, so uh, we did five escape rooms <laughs> this weekend. We just stumbled across another one. Yeah. There um, was a man in an alleyway, and he said, <laughs> I'm going to lock you here. <laughs> <laughs> You have it's 60 all minutes to escape. Uh, this may be our last will and test. <laughs> but the Doctor Who one was great, and it was, you know, for better or for worse, it was okay for us because we both are fans of Doctor Who and mm. know more of the information. Especially you, you know a lot of the older stuff. But and so I could see how it'd be really hard for somebody. Or harder for people who didn't have a good background. Yeah, you definitely, mm-hmm. in this particular case, yeah. needed at least one person who knew Doctor Who yeah. mm-hmm. pretty well. I mean, you could kind of focus on like the mechanical parts of it, like we need this to do this and this. But uh, if you can't, like, I don't really want to. I, I don't, don't want to spoil yeah. anything. Yeah. yeah. But, one thing I'll say is I think I don't think I've ever had so many like clues. There, there were so many. Every time you turned around, it was like, oh yeah, there's this. There's, and then there's, there's this. There's like five more And there's this. And, like, and they all go together. Yeah. But. It was. Did it, you get his name? The guy who uh, made the room? No, I didn't know. He was very. He, Phil. I think it was Phil. He did an incredible um, job. He designed it from scratch, tested it out on other Doctor Who Society members. Members, yeah. And then they brought it to London Comic Con for the first time and. Like, well done. It was yeah. so well done. I, I, and tr- I tried to impress upon them as much as possible that they should bring it to, like, every single con they possibly could. I, I would love to see it set up somewhere. Like, in a building. Oh, yeah. Because mm. they did so much with curtains, but to be able to, like, add atmosphere and to add stuff on the wall that maybe... Because they only have curtains, so they can't really add a lot of just for atmosphere. Yeah. So, like, if there was something on the wall, it was a clue kind of thing. Yeah. But if you could have it set up, then you could have it look like the inside of the TARDIS. Or something You could have it look like whatever you wanted to look like, and I think that would, like, add a lot of ambience. Yeah. Anyways, it would be super cool, but even if it was just a traveling one... Yeah, it was a great, great experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was also the first con where we got to test out a bunch of our new tech, which, like, you don't notice any of this, but... (laughs) What it means is uh, we had we interviewed a couple people, and we'll post that up on the YouTube later at some point. Mm-hmm. I'm actually gonna try to clean it up in editing, so like it'll, it'll be it'll be a smooth, yeah, a smooth, tightly edited star piece. swipe yeah. and star swipe. As long as it's 100% star swipes. Yeah, that's the classiest of the swipes. In, in perhaps contrast to this video. Oh but yeah, this you, is super this scrappy. Is, this is definitely going to end up better looking than any of your our other con reports, by virtue of the tech that is. Oh available. yeah. So like for reference, previously we would record with my laptop, yep. which is like works I guess. And bef- after that, we're like, oh, we can use my smartphone. But then we 
record with my little um, voice recorder, voice recorder yeah. and then sync it up. So sometimes they fall out of sync or like the video runs too long. So then it's like there's a little title card that says <laughs> this scene missing. <laughs> Or the fact that you have to, like, share the recorder yeah, between everyone. Yeah. So if somebody starts talking over at that end, then you're like... Yeah, I mean, this, this like, we have just, like, a blue snowball mic over here. And it, that, yeah. that's still not perfect, but it still works pretty yeah. well. So we got to test that all out this weekend. So stay tuned for other cool stuff coming in the future, probably. But uh, oh, sure. definitely more stuff coming in the future, future, as we go to more cons. Um, Sounds like the con train is is rolling for the next cast as the fall con season begins to expand in uh, in southern Ontario. Yeah. Yeah, like you guys have two more for sure. Yeah, four. So, I mean, we can talk about this now or yeah. later. We're gonna unplugged. Yeah, and four city. And four city. Yeah. Not sure within three I weeks they should be. Probably trailer. won't be at unplugged. You will definitely be at Forest City. Well, I <laughs> might as well. Forest City is another London, Ontario Comic Con. And as you guys may know, we're in London. So, I so might as well. Don't stalk these people. Don't murder them. Is that what we're going out on? I got, I got, I got <laughs> cool. That's uh, pretty much. Oh yeah, it's pretty um, much our day yeah, at the uh, at London Comic Con. Final thoughts for technically day two of London Comic Con. Um. I cosplayed again, just my Aquaman costume. It was fine. It fell apart a little bit more. (laughs) It's a great costume. It is a great costume, but it needs a lot of work to be wearable for a third time, so it's probably getting retired tonight for the foreseeable future, because the shirt needs to be completely redone. But uh, anyone who saw it was super positive about it, just like how many, any times, time. how many times did you get pulled over for photos? I only got pulled over for photos like mm. about three, three or four times this this day. Seemingly only when you were standing still. Yeah. There weren't a ton of people like taking pictures or no. in costume. No, and yeah, that like, there was were the a thing. bunch of people in costume, but just like not a not as many as I'm used to seeing. And I found again, like, and this, this was something I was thinking of after you were saying that when you came out of the wrestling, there were so many more people. I noticed that as well when I came out of the movie. Way more people, way more people in costume as well. And I wonder, because I never, I didn't go do the masquerade, and we didn't stay around to watch the masquerade, how many of those people had attended just for that? Because mm. I think you had to be at pre reg by something like three or four. Mm. So I could see a lot of people showing up mid-afternoon to like do a little shopping, catch a panel if they really wanted to, and then go to pre reg and sit in pre registration for hours. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was still fun. <laughs> yes, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Um, wasn't expecting too much from London Comic Con, but uh, I had a lot of fun today. Uh, panel. In the escape room, and even the wrestling, I really enjoyed it. it uh, you know, probably didn't need to spend as much time as we did there today, but the stuff we did do when we were there was great. I enjoyed that a lot. I enjoyed doing th- things that we don't normally do, like sit and watch wrestling. Yeah. Or go to weird, random things where people read fan fiction. New experiences. Yeah, new experiences are good, man. Yeah. We were talking today about, like, making mistakes. Even if, like, could have done other things this weekend, I think it was worthwhile to go and do a bunch of the new stuff. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, stay tuned for... Well, we're going to do this again tomorrow, right? Yeah. Might yeah. be shorter. But... As long as we do things tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we have another escape room tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So, shout out to... It's just called Escape, Escape. right? Yeah, okay. in London. Escape, which is on York Street in London, to make it more specific and easier to find on the internet, because you do have a little bit of an ambiguous name. You have, um, you have lots of places called Escape and <laughs> multiple Londons. So, but yeah, yeah, so shout out to you guys, because we did do your Upside Down Room last night, and there were some technical difficulties in the room. They are letting us have another go in a different room tomorrow night. So we'll be doing that. So we'll probably talk about that because 
will still be done way before you need to head out. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we'll probably come back here and do that. Um, and then I know I'm going to be going to short films as much as I can tomorrow. So I'll have more movies to talk about. And then Christian and Toby have, have a, panel. a panel tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and we'll probably interview them tomorrow, too. And yeah. you'll probably interview yeah. them. So and there's... I feel like there was one more thing I saw on the menu, but I forget. Okay, so there'll, there'll be lots of things for us We'll have stuff tomorrow. to talk about for yeah. sure. So uh, stay tuned and... Uh... Oh, one other thing. Did you guys see any notable cosplay? Oh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, uh, I always like uh, to talk about it. I'd like to, but I'm I'm actually drawing a blank. <laughs> There's a very good group of Avengers. Oh, yeah, it's sorry. Just, those guys. Avengers. And those guys. And the, the, the guy doing Thor had like this huge beard. Oh, great, 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 bushy beard. That's what he had. It's fantastic. They had almost a full complement of Avengers. Yeah, it was Iron Man, R. Captain R. America. Silver. Iron I Man, did... Captain America, Black Widow, and... Um... Did they have... Was that Scarlet Witch with them? Oh, I don't know. Because I saw a Scarlet Witch, like a Marvel Scarlet Witch, but I don't know if it, she was with that group or not. I don't know. I saw another Captain America later on, and he looked... Like, he had a really fantastic set of gear. Oh, it was cool. like the, I think it was like the World War One oh, style. Oh, sweet. Yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, I would I would cheat and <clears throat> say the same thing as you. The That Avengers group was fantastic. I know who mine is. It's Doom! <laughs> there was a Doom. There was a Doom. And I'm probably going to steal his idea on how his mask, how he keeps his mask on because I'd been trying to figure out how to do it and all I could think of was a series of magnets Hmm. which I guess I could also do but uh, that's on my docket for future cosplay so seeing his in person was like alright stay tuned for future cosplay from this group in the future yeah mostly mostly this person and Lulu me person Exciting things coming. Exciting things. Yeah, future. we'll definitely. I'll have definitely have a new one for for C. Streets ahead. Streets ahead. Streets ahead. I think we're gonna go out on streets ahead. Yeah, I think we're. All right. Good night, <laughs> yeah. everybody. Bye. This has been Nick's Good night. <laughs> good night. <laughs>